Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. One day in Mexico. You're in for a surprise if you've ever wondered what happened with the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. It was a warm spring day on a piece of land in what is now Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It was a wet forest, a kind of prehistoric swamp back then. It was a little chilly and summer was just around the corner. And then, out of nowhere, the sky filled with fire and an asteroid crashed into the Earth. According to paleontologist Melanie During, it was like throwing a bowling ball into a sandbox. The asteroid was about the size of a city. The energy created by the impact was so immense that particles of molten rock were injected far away. Some circled the moon and fell into the atmosphere. These explosive particles crystallized, falling as rain back down to the planet. The extraordinary crystallization of the particles helped scientists put all of the missing pieces together. The asteroid was about 12 kilometers wide and hit the Earth so hard it made the Chicxulub crater, which is 180 kilometers wide. Within minutes, the explosion plunged the entire planet into chaos, tsunamis, earthquakes and uncountable disasters on a biblical scale. The following string of events cost the lives of about every living thing on the planet, about 80% of all life forms. As for what happened to the physical asteroid, it blew itself to pieces. Think about an enormous snowball falling from a plane and hitting the sand. Although it would leave an impact crater, the obliterated snowball would be gone. In this case, the asteroid shattered into billions of tiny heated fragments. Some flew past the moon and some landed as far away as North Dakota. Number 9. The Edge of the Solar System Since the asteroid shattered like an overheated piece of glass being thrown against the sidewalk, scientists have been trying to figure out where it came from. According to a new study, the asteroid may have been a piece of a comet. On the other hand, an unknown force may have kicked it out of Jupiter's gravitational pull and flung it on a collision course with Earth. This is exciting because scientists theorize that the asteroid came from somewhere between Jupiter and Mars before the study was published in the journal Scientific Reports. Instead, this new study claims the asteroid came from the Oort cloud, a giant collection of icy bodies hanging around the outer edge of our solar system. It's almost like a huge cloud of rocks orbiting the sun, with each orbit taking hundreds and hundreds of years. The chances of one rock ever hitting a planet are extremely low. However, Jupiter's gravity sometimes pushes these comets close to the Sun, breaking them apart. Their fragments get knocked out of orbit and go hurtling through space. Not only did this possibly happen once, but scientists say it could happen again. They say such instances of a rock being thrown out of the Oort cloud and hitting Earth could happen every 250 to 730 million years. Let's hope it's still a few million years away. Number 8 colorful pterosaurs. During the age of the dinosaurs, it was the pterosaur that ruled the sky. These were giant flying reptiles like an eagle mixed with a crocodile. They were terrifying, flying through the sky and feasting on small dinosaurs. Until recently, scientists weren't sure what they looked like on the outside. We know all about their physiology and what their bones looked like, but not their skin. So scientists have debated for decades whether pterosaurs were scaly like lizards or if they had feathers like birds. Researchers recently analyzed the fossil of a Tupandactylus imperator, a kind of pterosaur that lived 115 million years ago in what is now Brazil. Paleontologists looked at the head crest of this fossilized beast and could make some shocking conclusions. They found out that not only did these flying reptiles have feathers, but they could control the color of their feathers. They could control their plumage on a cellular level to create colorful feathers. These things were basically peacocks, except obviously scarier, with wildly bright feathers. Scientists could also see that this particular pterosaur had two different kinds of feathers. According to the lead researcher, paleontologist Audis Chincota from the University College Cork in Ireland, it had short feathers like human hair and fluffier feathers like birds. We now know that color patterns were significant for these animals, just like modern birds today. It probably helped with mating, avoiding predators, and communication. For decades, paleontologists have argued about whether pterosaurs had feathers. The feathers in this specimen finally end that debate. 
They are very clearly branched all the way along their length, just like modern birds. Number 7. Awkward Necks Scientists have always wondered why plesiosaurs evolved to have such long and awkward necks. Plesiosaurs had some of the most ridiculously long necks of any animal that ever lived. Some of them had necks over 21 feet long, consisting of 76 vertebrae. And these weren't even land animals, but aquatic creatures that looked kind of like the Loch Ness Monster. One thing that's never really made sense is that most aquatic creatures are streamlined, making it easier to swim. They were aerodynamic for being under the water, or aquadynamic if you will. But plesiosaurs weren't streamlined and came in a heap of varying forms and dimensions. They had long necks and fat bodies and were totally unfit for life underwater. At least that's what researchers thought until recently. Then scientists from the College of Bristol in the UK studied the unique shapes of plesiosaurs and reached an exciting conclusion. They discovered that their long necks created unwanted drag while swimming. However, their bodies were so big that they counteracted the drag. Even with a neck that long, the monstrous plesiosaur could still easily glide through the water with a single mighty flap of its limbs. Number 6. The Death Shadow Paleontologists in Argentina just announced the discovery of a dinosaur so ferocious and so giant it would probably make you pee your pants if you ever saw it. This apex predator was about three stories from the tip of its tail to the point of its nose and had claws like sickles to rip apart its prey. This monster is known as the Death Shadow Dinosaur, and it was the most prominent member of the raptor family that scientists have ever identified. Scientists call it a mega raptor, the biggest of its kind at about five tons. It feasted on other dinosaurs, pulling out their intestines to eat with its massive talons. Mauro Aranciaga, who studied this prehistoric creature, said it was probably the apex predator of its time. It was an untouchable monster that ruled all of Argentina. Therefore, they are calling it the Shadow of Death. 70 million years ago, before the Andes Mountains had risen and the Amazon jungle had taken form, this two-legged reptile was the most dangerous creature in South America. Patagonia has been the location of other fantastic paleontological discoveries. In 2019, researchers found an herbivorous dinosaur that fought off predators with a row of spines running along its back and lived 140 million years ago. It was found in the same territory as the Death Shadow. And in 2014, scientists announced they had unearthed the skeleton of a previously unknown massive dinosaur species that was one of the biggest land animals anyone has ever found. Were these dinosaurs cousins? We will have to wait and see. Number 5. Giant Ichthyosaur Paleontologists have just found a set of fossils from three new ichthyosaur species, each one unique. They found the original fossils high in the Swiss Alps between 1976 and 1990. You have to be kind of a mountain goat to access the relevant beds, Sander, one of the researchers said. They have the vexing property of not occurring below about 8,000 feet way above the tree line. Among the finds was the biggest ichthyosaur tooth ever found. Just the width of the tooth's root was about twice as big as any other aquatic reptile known to scientists. Before this tooth, the biggest one ever belonged to a different species of ichthyosaur that was about 45 feet long. So that suggests that this one was closer to about 100 feet long. To give you a visual idea, it looked like a dolphin the size of a blue whale with the teeth of a shark. Even though they found the fossil over 30 years ago, it wasn't until now that scientists took an interest in them. Then Dr. Heinz Furr from the University of Zurich analyzed the tooth and identified it as belonging to the biggest ichthyosaur in history. And he believes there could be even more remains of these giant sea creatures buried underneath the snow in the Alps and hiding underneath frozen glaciers. As you probably know already, the world was quite different 200 million years ago. Oceans covered the Swiss Alps back then. So when an ichthyosaur died, it floated down onto the tops of what are now the Alps and were fossilized. Now they are just really hard to get to. Number 4. Radioactive Dino Skull Paleontologists have identified a massive dinosaur from 155 million years ago in Utah. This creature is so much more interesting than other dinosaurs because it has a radioactive skull. The dinosaur is a species of Allosaurus, 
a fearsome monster that ran on two legs and had 80 sharp teeth in its mouth with spiky horns over its eyes. It wasn't only a dangerous dinosaur, it was really scary to look at. This monster was like a reptile demon roaming around in packs and feasting on anything it found. Paleontologists found the original skeleton in 1990, but when they found it, its head was nowhere to be seen. They only had the skeleton of the body, which weighed about 6,000 pounds. They had to use explosives to get the fossils out of the dirt, then a helicopter to transport them to the laboratory to be studied. It wasn't until six years later that a retired radiologist from the University of Utah used a radiation detector to find the skull. It was hiding near where paleontologists initially found the body. But just why in the world was the dinosaur skull radioactive? According to the experts, it's pretty standard. This wasn't a radioactive dinosaur given superpowers by some crazy science experiment gone wrong. Dinosaur bones frequently become radioactive because of elements that leak into their bones through the dirt. Over millions of years, tiny amounts of radioactive elements get sucked into their fossils so that dinosaur bones give off a subtle buzz of radiation. Number 3. The First Armored Dinosaur Researchers have just discovered the earliest armored dinosaur in Asia. This creature is the oldest ancestor of any dinosaur with plate armor, and there were a lot of them. They discovered the fossil of this brand new species in China, and according to the researchers, it was quite a shocking looking beast. It was colorful, covered in spikes and pieces of armor. This beast looked like it played the drums for a dinosaur heavy metal band. It was a species of Thyreophora, alongside other armored dinosaurs like the Stegosaurus and the Ankylosaurus. Paleontologists call this one the Yuxisaurus Kopchiki, and it lived in the Yunnan province of China about 192 million years ago. Like the incredible armored dinosaurs that came after it, this one was a living tank. It was short, stocky, extremely heavy, and pretty much impossible for the predators of the early Jurassic to eat. It would have been like a tiger trying to bite through a turtle shell. Number 2. The Official Dinosaur of Massachusetts As of 2022, the Podokosaurus holiokensis is the official state dinosaur of Massachusetts. Massachusetts residents voted via an online poll back in 2021 for which dinosaur they wanted to be their official mascot, and this was the winner, with a startling 60% of the votes. Believe it or not, this tiny dinosaur wasn't all that ferocious. It was about the size of a house cat, yet was the same shape as a velociraptor or a T-Rex. It would have looked like somebody hit a Tyrannosaurus with a shrink ray to the untrained eye. This little fellow was a small theropod that lived about 195 million years ago in, guess where, Massachusetts. What makes the dinosaur so unique is that it was discovered by Professor Mignon Talbot, one of the very first women in the country to earn a PhD in geology at Yale University. She was also the first woman in the U.S. to join the Paleontological Society. She was walking with her sister in Massachusetts back in 1910 when she identified a dinosaur skeleton stuck in a sandstone boulder. On that day, Mignon Talbot became the first female in history to discover an almost complete dinosaur skeleton. She gave the dino its name in 1911, and over a century later, it's the official state dinosaur. Number 1. Scotty the T-Rex Scientists in Canada made a rare discovery inside the fossil of Scotty the T-Rex. They believe it's the first discovery of its kind. A research team from Saskatchewan found a preserved network of blood vessels inside one of the dinosaur's ribs. The University of Saskatchewan student Jarrett Mitchell discovered it while creating a 3D model of the fossil, which dates back 67 million years. It was a monstrous Tyrannosaurus that lived at the very end of the age of the dinosaurs. Mitchell created the model using synchrotron scans to see inside the fossil at a molecular level. At first, he wasn't sure what he was looking at. Then there was a structure that didn't seem to fit, so Mitchell got other scientists in on it. The team then realized they were dealing with biological tissue, preserved blood vessels inside the largest T-Rex ever uncovered. Scotty still holds the record as the most enormous Tyrannosaurus Rex in the world, at 19,555 pounds and almost 40 feet long. As for the preserved blood vessels, we don't know the implications yet. 
This is the first time anyone has found anything like it, and it could lead to a lot more discoveries. For example, scientists might discover cells and thoroughly map the DNA of dinosaurs. And who knows? In 20 years, this research could lead to the first dinosaur egg hatching in a real world Jurassic Park. Thanks for watching! Would you rather visit a park with real dinosaur clones like Jurassic Park or have one as a pet? Let me know in the comments below. And remember to subscribe for more videos about amazing prehistoric creatures. See you later. Bye!